Hello everyone. Welcome to the sixth lecture of the course Statistical Thermodynamics. The topic of this lecture is a review of classical thermodynamics, specifically quasi-static, reversible, irreversible and cyclic processes. We have seen in the previous lecture that work done and heat absorbed by a system while going from one equilibrium state to another depends on the path taken by the system or the precise steps followed to go between the two states. Of the infinite ways or processes by which a system can go from one state to another, a subset of processes called quasi-static processes are especially important for us to understand because they are crucial in learning about, among other things, the efficiency of engines and the concept of entropy. The motivation of a quasi-static process comes from wanting to change the thermodynamic state of a system while at the same time being in thermodynamic equilibrium while the change is being made. Clearly, these two things are antithetical and cannot really be done. But we can do something which is almost that in what is called a quasi-static process. A quasi-static process is one in which the changes to the system while going from one equilibrium state, say A, to another, say B, are done in very small steps so that the system remains in equilibrium or at least nearly in equilibrium at all times while going from A to B. At each step, the system is allowed to equilibrate and since there are many particles in the system, this happens very slowly. Let us understand this with an example. Consider the same system like in the last lecture, that is a dilute gas with pressure P and volume V in a cylinder with a piston with weights like this. The thermodynamic state of the system is represented by this dot on the PV diagram. If we remove some of the weights and the walls of the cylinder are diathermal so that temperature remains constant, the system goes to a new thermodynamic state completely described by this dot on the PV diagram with pressure P2 and volume V2. So the real system is Something like this, we remove weights and this is the new system. Now the question is, what is the state of the system while it is going from one equilibrium state to another? The answer is, the system does not have a thermodynamic state while going from this equilibrium state P1, V1 to this equilibrium state P2, V2. You can imagine that as soon as we remove some of the weights, the piston head starts flying up as if pushed by a compressed spring and bounces up and down for some time. This is a period of turmoil for the gas and its density is different in different parts of the cylinder. After a while, the piston settles down and the system reaches a new equilibrium state. So, immediately after the weights are removed, the system does not even exist on the PV diagram. Let us now consider a quasi-static process of going between these same two equilibrium states.
For this, imagine that instead of weights, we have some sand on the piston head, which exerts the same pressure P1, so that the volume is V1. Now, let us remove one grain of sand, which ideally has infinitesimally small weight. The pressure reduces by an infinite small amount and the system expands by an infinite small amount and the new thermodynamic state of the system is this point right next to the previous state point. And if we continue repeating this process of removing one grain of sand at a time till the pressure becomes P2V2, the system for all practical purposes remains on the PV diagram while going between the two states. The path followed by the system can be represented by a curve like this on the PV diagram. A quasi-static process is sometimes called a reversible process. A reversible process is one where the system and surroundings return to their original state when the steps taken while doing the forward process are reversed. There is a subtle difference between quasi-static and reversible processes. Let us look into it. In our system, if we go backwards, that is we add one grain of sand at a time, we return to the same state of the system and surroundings. That is the universe is restored to what it was originally. The very important characteristic for reversibility is that the universe returns to its original state when the process is done backwards, not just the system. Let us understand this a little better. Let us go back to the one step expansion from V1 to V2. The system is initially here and when the weights are removed, it expands and equilibrates to this state here. When we put the weights back, the system returns to the original state with volume V1. So is the process reversible? It is irreversible or not reversible because in the overall process, the surroundings have gained heat. On the PV diagram, the heat taken from the surroundings for the expansion is this area. The heat given to the surroundings during the compression is this area. So, there is a net heat flow corresponding to this area during the process. 
Now suppose the process was done quasi statically. The heat absorbed during expansion is the area under this curve and the exact same amount of heat is released during compression so the surroundings are not changed in the process and the process is reversible. All reversible processes are necessarily quasi-static. However, the converse is not true. All quasi-static processes need not be reversible. For example, a system could be undergoing a quasi-static process, but it is exchanging energy with another system which is undergoing a non-quasi-static process. Then the process as a whole is not reversible. The key point is that quasi-static describes how a system is changed from one state to another. Reversible on the other hand describes the process as a whole, the system and its surroundings. And that is the origin of the subtle difference in the terms quasi-static and reversible. In thermodynamics discussions, quasi-static processes are usually referred to as reversible and we will do the same while being aware of the underlying assumptions and subtleties. Let us now obtain an expression for the work done and heat absorbed for a quasi-static isothermal expansion of an ideal gas. The system follows this path while going from the initial state P1V1 to the final state P2V2. Consider that the system is at this point PV. For an infinitesimal expansion, the work done is delta W is equal to minus P D V. That is the small area on the curve. Using the ideal gas law, we can write the P as minus nRT by V because we want to write everything in terms of the variable V. And then if we integrate between the initial and the final pressures, the total work done W is minus nRT, which are constants and integral from V1 to V2 dV by V which is minus nRT ln V2 by V1. The negative sign indicates that work is done by the gas. The heat absorbed Q is equal to minus W and this can be obtained from the first law of thermodynamics because the change in internal energy delta E is equal to zero during this isothermal process. In a quasi-static expansion, the maximum amount of work is done by the gas during the change of state. Note that a quasi-static process by which a system goes from one equilibrium state to another is not unique. For example, here is the initial state and here is the final state. And an isothermal reversible expansion would take us from the initial state to the final state like this. 
but we could have arrived at the same final state by taking another quasi static path for example let's say this temperature was t1 it's the same temperature t1 we could hold the volume constant and go down from that initial point to this point where the pressure is t2 the volume is v1 and there is a different temperature t2 this constant volume process is called an isochoric process the constant temperature process as you know should be labeled as isothermal and now keeping the pressure constant we can go from this point to this point where we are changing the volume and changing the temperature so now you see that here is a different path to go from the initial state point to the final state point this is an isobaric process now all the processes here are quasi static and make sure you can visualize how to perform a quasi static isochoric process and a quasi static isobaric process in any case the point here is that there are two different quasi static processes by which the system goes from the initial state point to the final state point and a quasi static process is not unique this example also allows us to understand one more idea which is that of a cyclic reversible process the idea here is that we start from a state point and return to the state point after going through different quasi static processes so for example we could go to this state point here isothermally and then we could perform an isobaric compression to come to this state point followed by an isochoric heating to come to this state point in this process if you calculate the work done in the forward process and the backward process you will see that the net work done during this cyclic reversible process is the area in this loop in the pv diagram for a cyclic process the change in internal energy is zero so the internal energy has no information about the history of the system heat enters the system and work is done but the state of the gas does not change in the cycle the heat that enters the system is numerically opposite to the work done cyclic processes are the essence of how heat engines work and will help us also define the concept of entropy in the next lecture we will look at another type of process by which the system can be changed namely an adiabatic process see you for that